is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today we are at the Memorial Park Cemetery here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're gonna go visit the final resting place of the two scam artists known as the Alamos. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about their cultish behavior, their cultish existence, the putrid lies, the scams, the horror that these two inflicted upon the people that believed in the absolute phony tripe that they were spewing for years and years and years. Stay tuned, uh, there's more to come in this story of just lies and putrid behavior, really. Before we begin the video, I wanna pay my respects to Sam Kinison right here. Uh, this, of course, uh, was a famous stand-up comic. Uh, he was one of the very first stand-up comics that I used to follow when I was a kid growing up in Hollywood. And uh, his brother, Kevin, is buried alongside with him and this is his father reverend samuel earl kinnison uh a very uh interesting start to his life uh, that's for sure i did a video previously about his grave uh and i'm gonna redo that video but this time i want to uh, add some uh more locations to it uh that video however may never come out it really just depends on who picks up the phone so we're going to talk about the Alamo uh, clan, uh, the cult leaders, uh, this uh, ragtag group of weirdos, to say the least. So Tony Alamo was born on September 20th, 1934. He was born over in Joplin, Missouri, which is, I think it's about 100 miles away from here. Uh, he was actually born to a Jewish family, uh, but... Tony Alamo is not his real name. That was a made-up name that he came up with because he wanted to be a singer. Uh, his real name was Bernie Lazar Hoffman. And uh, as a young adult, he had moved to Los Angeles in the 60s because he wanted to be a singer. He wanted to be kind of like a Frank Sinatra type. And he felt if he changed his name, you know, to kind of that Italian crooner sounding name that that would help his career. And uh, later on, he would be smitten by a woman who was 10 years his senior. Her name was Susan Alamo. Excuse me, Alamo. Uh, her real name was Edith Opal Horn. She was born uh, in Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas, in 1925. So, you know, most people, they move to Los Angeles because they want to be somebody in the entertainment field. Uh, Tony, he wanted to be a singer, and uh, Susan, she wanted to be a, a, an actress. Uh, now, to make money, uh, Tony, he had a health club that he owned, uh, and, well, Susan, she was just an outright scam artist. I mean, she was going to churches around Southern California saying that she was a missionary from Arkansas, laying in that thick old... The Southern girl accent, uh, wholesome, whatever she w wanted to try to portray herself to be. And that's how she made her living. And they eventually had met. Uh, and right before they got married, they say in an interview that they had uh, changed their name to Alamo. So now she's Susan and he's Tony. So according to tony alamo which you know with this guy you really can't believe anything he really says uh, he claims that during some kind of a business meeting that uh, he had an epiphany or uh, jesus visited him and basically told him i want you to start a ministry uh you are one of my prophets and i want you to spread the word of god and tony said okay okay i can i can definitely do that so after they get married in 1969, uh, Tony and Susan, they start their Alamo Christian ministry because uh, according to Tony, like I said, uh, Jesus told him to do so. Now, these guys would go on the street, right? And I guess one of these people with the loudspeakers and then they're telling you to repent or you're gonna go to hell, or what have you. So they're going to 
the street. But they're not targeting uh, people that churches prefer to target, uh, you know, middle class families that would, you know, tithe or what have you. Uh, they're targeting um, the fringe of society. They're targeting uh, prostitutes, uh, teenage runaways. They love teenage runaways, as I later will tell you in this story. Uh, Gangbangers, uh, just uh, criminals, thieves, liars, pimps, prostitutes, all that stuff. It just, the, the, the dregs of society, or as what we would call them, the low of the low. So, they're getting these uh, people, and they would tell them, listen, uh, we'll give you a hot meal, uh, you could listen to music, uh, the power of God is real. Uh, they would talk about their backgrounds, and they painted this uh, beautiful picture that uh, if they were on drugs, they would get off of drugs, they would help save their soul, because hell is hot and hell is real. And some of these people took their offer up and became members of their church. Now, at the time when they were in Hollywood, uh, Tony, who did have a talent uh, for fashion, if you will, he had uh, these people that he promised that he would save their whole from the pits of hell, or a future hell when they died. And in exchange for, you know, being fed and, and pre preached the word of uh, the Lord, preached the gospel, uh, these people would work for Tony Alamo. And work they did. Uh, a lot of working going on in the uh, Alamo uh, empire, if you will. As they would get more and more people to join their Christian organization, uh, they started making more money. They had over 100 people working for them. Oh, and by the way, uh, when you work for Tony Alamo, uh, you're not getting paid. <laughs> yeah, there is no pay. Uh, the pay working for uh, Tony Alamo is that you're not going to go burn in hell. Now, Tony and Susan made millions and millions of dollars. Uh, by the mid-70s, they ended up moving their church uh, over to Dyer, Arkansas. Now, one of the many ways that they would make money was uh, I think the number one might have been these ugly jackets <laughs> that uh, Tony Alamo would make. Uh, if you remember in the 80s, and I remember these jackets, these jackets were terrible, they're still terrible. Uh, basically, he would take Levi's denim jean jackets or whatever denim jacket that he would get his hands on. He would buy them in bulk and then he would get somebody that was really good with airbrushing and they would airbrush the jacket and then he would have little children like the children of the people that lived on his compound they would put like the they would bedazzle the jackets uh, they would put little rhinestones on there uh, they, of anything that was popular uh, the movie the movie uh, Hollywood Tokyo, whatever he can come up with he would make and design those jackets and these jackets would sell from anywhere from maybe a hundred dollars for a cheap one and they would go as high as a thousand dollars and this was in the 80s and you had a lot of hollywood celebrities wearing these jackets you had dolly parton you had brooke shields you had mr t uh michael jackson on the album cover of bad wearing on that almost had when they moved to arkansas they owned a grocery store several of them i believe more than one they owned um a trucking company they had the uh alamo restaurant uh they had a, a, a record company and as they grew popular they would sell their uh you know tapes uh, records, recordings, whatever. And then as the people that lived and worked for the Alamos, by the way, again, they're not getting paid. As they lived on this compound, they would have kids. And these kids grew up in this compound 
kind of like a like a Branch Davidian David Koresh type environment where they didn't know any better. They didn't know what it was other than to be uh, living your life in servitude of the Lord, but more like servitude in the eyes of Tony Alamo. By the way, right now it's getting a little bit cold. Uh, I wish I had a Tony Alamo jacket that looked really terrible to put on around me because it's freezing over here. Anyways, so let's talk about uh, the truth of what was going on in the Tony Alamo compound. So this guy ruled his ministry with an iron fist. Um, he would preach to the people that stayed there that he was in communication with Jesus Christ and that Jesus told him that he could read the minds of his followers so he would tell them I know when you're thinking bad thoughts and according to Tony Alamo, Alamo he would tell them you know hell is a really bad place you're there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and hell is seven times hotter than the sun and there is no rest it is day and night torment forever and ever and ever and if you leave me if you leave this uh religious church whatever you want to call it uh you're gonna burn it first of all you're gonna die you're, you're you're just you're gonna leave and you're gonna die and number two you're gonna burn in hell and a lot of these people some left some seen past his lies and they left they took the gamble but uh a lot stayed because they were scared and can you imagine as a child you're hearing years and years of I can read your mind I can read your thoughts and then some of these adults who are stupid and they're scared to leave because they don't want to die and everyone's going around you know saying a prayer in their brain to keep out bad thoughts now what's a bad thought well, let's say you're a 14 year old girl, you're a 15 year old guy, you know, your hormones are going crazy. You see somebody you like, oh, but that's bad, that's terrible, that's awful. And, you know, if you see, you know, if, if you get a, a kid and he sees a girl that he likes, he's like, wow, look at that. Oh, I, I, I get out of my head, Satan. I'm going to wash the blood of Jesus. And then they will repeat this, this prayer. Uh, I'm gonna wash the blood of Jesus or my thoughts Satan get out of me And then you would have a bunch of people Walking around this compound. It's not funny But it kind of is that these uh, people believe this nonsense that they would just say like oh the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus and then you would You would hear this guy reciting this prayer and you would know that this guy is thinking bad thoughts also uh, the boys and girls were not allowed to really talk to each other. They were not allowed to hold hands, and they definitely were no kissing. Uh, lying was forbidden. Uh, they had many, many rules. Uh, one rule, very weird. You were only allowed to flush the toilet once every two days. I don't get that one. Uh, you had to uh, eat all of your food on your plate. And let me tell you, it, there was more rules and breaking the rules uh, was an instant beating. No smoking, no drinking, no adultery, no homosexuality. These were but one of the many rules that if you were to break and you were a member of his church, uh, you would be subjected to a beating via a wooden paddle. Can you imagine being a grown man and let's say you were caught, uh, I don't know, smoking a cig and then you're going to, Tony, uh, Tony Alamo is going to tell you that you're going to get 10 swats and you don't have to take the 10 swats, but you're going to die and burn in hell if you leave the compound. So you would have grown men bending over a table, getting swatted like, like little children from the 40s. Very, very, very weird. And you had children who would all of a sudden 
start turning on their parents because these kids, they're looking up to Tony Alamo and Susan as not necessarily their parents, but more than their parents, a very authoritative figure, almost like a prophet, like a prophet, maybe almost like Jesus Christ in a sense. You had kids who would go around turning in their own parents for this smallest uh, breakage of the rules, indiscretions, if you will. If you saw your mom talking to a man that was not her husband, you could easily go to Tony Alamo and say, hey, I saw my mom talking to Tim. Oh, you seen your mom talking to Tim, huh? Well, that's not gonna go down in my church. You'd bring the woman in and uh, you would say, hey, uh, Jeffrey told me that uh, you were talking to Tim. Like, she would say, no, I wasn't. Oh, you're lying. And in some cases, he would have their own children beat their parents, beat their mom, beat their dad. This was a weird, weird, weird organization. And of course, as you get popular and you're growing bigger and bigger and bigger, you're gonna have somebody coming in, knocking on a door. And one of those government bodies was the IRS because you see, Tony was making millions and millions of dollars a year, but he wasn't uh, reporting any taxes. He wasn't paying any taxes because his restaurant, his grocery store, his record label, all of that, he claimed that as the church, as the money that the church made, so they were tax exempt. And so he became uh, subject of a very scrutinized investigation by the government. And later on, he would be charged. He was indicted for threatening a federal judge. Uh, however, the charges were dismissed. Uh, but later on, he would end up uh, going to prison for a few years. Now, things really, really started to uh, crumble for that organization when Susan became sick. So I think it could have been like maybe the late 70s. Uh, she was, or it could have been even uh, the early 80s. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. And as she became sicker and sicker and sicker, uh, Tony Alamo would tell his, you know, uh, followers uh, that, oh yeah, she's, uh, you know, she's going to get uh, better. Uh, the Lord is going to heal her. Well, the Lord did not heal Susan Alamo and uh, she would go on to pass away. I think it's on uh, April 8th, 1982. So she dies. And by this time, Susan, who had a child uh, from a previous marriage, I mean, she had a, a, a very strained relationship with her daughter because I guess, you know, the daughter didn't approve of this woman living this kind of weird lifestyle. And uh, there was a fight over her body. Now, Tony Alamo, he told his, uh, his followers, he says, you know, we need to pray over my wife's body because she's going to uh, resurrect in three days. So you got to imagine, Susan dies, her body is lying in state on the compound, and you have the whole church, everybody that lives in this compound, praying over her body for hours and hours and hours on end. So these guys are praying, these kids are praying, praying for her body to be resurrected like the Lord Jesus Christ, except for uh, Susan Alamo uh, had no divinity. She had no power. Uh, she was not going to get resurrected. Everyone that is born uh, will die. So by the third day, uh, she's still dead. And people are starting to look around and they're saying, I think this guy's full of crap. What? I think this guy's a BS conman. I'm starting to think that this is all a lie. She's still dead. What's going on over here? That was the start of the crumbling of the Alamo Empire. So while the fight for possession of Susan's body is taking place, this clown, Tony Alamo, uh, hides 
his uh, wife's body and for the next uh, some odd months uh, they're playing cat and mouse games with the with law enforcement in terms of uh, turning over her body eventually they would turn over her body to her family where she would be buried uh, properly now you got his wife dying she did not become resurrected uh, you have the IRS knocking on your door they want they want their money trust me I know they want their money and you have people leaving the uh, you know the church the compound whatever you want to call it so uh, you fast forward slowly but surely his crumbling empire and in 1994 uh, this guy would end up uh, finally being convicted of tax evasion and uh, he did about four years in prison so he gets out in 1998 and uh, this guy is no longer uh, the man that he once was and all of a sudden he starts becoming a creep uh, a big-time sexual creep uh, the worst kinds of all so over the course of several years Tony Alamo uh, would marry and remarry and marry again and his wife seemed to get even younger and younger and younger and in an interview or maybe it was a secretly taped recording I'm not sure he said with his own perverted disgusting mind that if a girl started her menstruation then that she was a woman and she could be married and I believe one of his wives that he married was only 13 years old. Um, I don't exactly know how many times this guy was married to young girls, but it was a lot. And I want to say, don't quote me, I'll put up the correct year. Somewhere in 2009, he was eventually arrested uh, for uh, taking underage children across state lines. Some of them as young as nine uh, for the purpose of SEX or as we call it on this channel, sex. So he was arrested by the FBI. His empire is over. Uh, people see him for the fraud that he was. And uh, eventually he was given 175 years in prison, which was the absolute maximum that he can get. And I, he later uh, died in a prison hospital at the age of 82. Uh, he died in 2017. Uh, just a, you know, I, I, I probably could have did a, a, a more thorough video, but I don't know, th this subject's been kind of talked about a little bit much on YouTube, and I just wasn't interested in doing a deep dive. I was thinking about going to the, uh, their old compound, uh, in Arkansas, but I don't think I'm heading that way. Maybe I'll do a quick video, uh, about it, uh, but, uh. Well, there's, there's the grave. There's Tony Alamo right there. Pervert extraordinaire. As you can see his name, let's get a little bit of a close-up shot of this perv. Okay, right there. And his wife is right there. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, this, this guy was a pig. This guy would... He would starve, like if you broke a rule, this other than a beating, I mean, and these beatings were severe. They would like string you up like in the air and swat you. Um, it was pretty bad. And uh, this guy, this guy would uh, make people fast for days on end. If you were caught breaking the rule, uh, he would call women uh, sweat hogs. Uh, he, was a, he was a womanizer. He was, uh, this guy was definitely a pig. For sure and I cannot believe that that many people allowed him and worked for him for free for all those years making him a multi-millionaire this guy was an absolute clown Jeez, Louise look at these people Wow just a, a, a story that could have gone on for an hour but I'm not I'm not interested in doing those kind of crazy long videos for clowns like this another video in the books that's it, uh, the Alamos, cult leaders extraordinaire. Wow. Um, so I want to talk, before I end the video, I want to talk about those ridiculous jackets. You know, how popular they were in the 80s. 
Well, you know how fashion is that everything that goes out of it comes back? Well, so there's some celebrities that uh, I, I've seen on uh, Google wearing these stupid jackets. Uh, Miley Cyrus and uh, Nicki Minaj amongst a few. And, I, you know, listen, I, I will say this. Uh, he was definitely a pedo creep and a, uh, and a rapist or as people on other YouTube channels call it, an R word. But uh, he was, uh, his jackets were very, very popular and people just absolutely loved them. And hey, at least they were made in the USA. Too bad they were made with uh, mostly child labor and slave labor. But uh, a, and I cannot believe this, I cannot believe people would pay for these uh, these gaudy jackets, but let me tell you, right now, if you go on eBay, uh, on average, a vintage Tony Alamo jacket is going for six hundred dollars right now. And I've seen one jacket that uh, right here, this jacket, uh, nineteen hundred dollars for a for a jacket. Um, let me say this though, you know, we all have our taste, we all have our opinions. A, a buddy of mine. His uh, wife actually sells, I don't know if it's jackets, I know it's some kind of clothing, I think it's jeans mostly, but she does something similar, just like that. Cop I, I don't wanna say she copied the, the blueprint, but she basically makes a very similar product and she sells it on Etsy and she makes a living doing it uh, and quite a decent living. So, if there's any entrepreneurs out there that want to make a couple bucks, uh, this Etsy thing, I think that's what it's called. Uh, this is like a, a proverbial mini gold mine, if you will. So, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I, you know, listen, the times are tough. Hey, maybe I'll start uh, getting in on this, uh, this gaudy jacket jean phase or whatever. Uh, maybe I'll start uh, selling my old, uh, my old t-shirts that really need to be thrown away. God, you know. I don't even know why I'm saying this now. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this video has gone on 20 minutes. I'm thinking people just gotta stop watching it or there. So maybe it's just a couple of, maybe there's, just, maybe there's about 20 people watching right now. I cannot throw a t-shirt away. I can't do it. This is this shirt that I'm wearing. This is a Kobe Bryant shirt, uh, stains on it. And I, and I know I could be dressing better for my, I just cannot throw a t-shirt away. Can't do it. I have t-shirts in my van right now from I got one t-shirt I bought at a thrift store in 2003 when I got out of jail. I still have that t-shirt, Arizona Wildcats. Go Wildcats! So, I don't know, I don't even know why I'm talking about that. But uh, that's the amazing thing about the internet, um, is that, uh, you know, it's it, the world as a, as a world market, uh, bringing uh, seller and buyer together. It's, a, it's quite an amazing thing. Anyways, live but not live, but still alive. By the grace of God, I am Lamont at large, coming to you from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, with winds gusting up to about 25 miles an hour or so. I'm gonna go get my jacket because it's a little cold. Uh, you've seen a famous grave back there. Uh, that was Roy Clark. I'm gonna be doing a video, a quick little video about him on my other channel. So I will catch up with you later. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was somewhat informative. Um, People are definitely crazy, and the good, the bad, the ugly of it all, it definitely makes it an interesting place, does it not? I'll see you later, guys, or at least I hope to on the next